Today, we talk about EDM platforms. This show is for everyone working at the coalface. Digital, business, marketing, social. This is At The Coalface with your host, Jason Greenwood. Hello everybody, I'm Jason Greenwood. Welcome to episode 57 of At The Coalface. In this uh, series that we're running at the moment, which is our digital transformation series, I want to talk next about a very essential piece of your omni-channel puzzle that will also play a massive part in the digital the transformation process of your business. And that, that is the EDM platform, which stands for Electronic Direct Mailing. So effectively, uh, it's the uh, digital equivalent of putting a letter in somebody's post box. So also known as electronic direct marketing. And uh, so what we want to talk about today is those platforms in relation to your overall marketing strategy and also how it can contribute to the success of your business, especially as you transform digitally in the way that you communicate to your customers on a recurring, ongoing basis. So for most businesses, EDM or email uh, as it's known uh, is often accounts for a significant percentage of revenue. It can account for anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of revenue for many businesses, especially if they're e-commerce businesses and primarily e-commerce businesses. Um, and it, it, it tends to be in the top three or four traffic sources for almost all e-commerce and omnichannel businesses. So email is still very, very important. The death of email has been highly exaggerated. And although open rates and click-through rates definitely have dropped over the last decade, email still stands out as one of the primary uh, marketing channels for all e-commerce and omnichannel commerce businesses today. As a result of that, it plays an absolutely key and critical component in your digital transformation journey. And we want to talk a little bit about some of your options in terms of the technologies that you can use, what differentiates them, what sets them apart, and how you can leverage them to transform your business in a very important way. Now, EDM tools or EDM platforms are also sometimes known as marketing automation tools, um, and they automate your marketing, but they, they primarily focus on email. So platforms for marketing automation that do other things, such as handle SMS messages and other forms of digital marketing, uh, can also play a part in your marketing automation platform selection. However, for most businesses, they start out with marketing automation being primarily focused on email and then expand out from there. Now, if you're a smaller business uh, and you don't have massively complex email needs, then the absolute pick of the litter in terms of platforms would be MailChimp. So MailChimp offers a free service. Uh, it's, a, it's basically a freemium model whereby if you have a small enough mailing list and you're sending out a few enough emails, then uh, it's free forever. And it allows you to get, start getting your feet wet with marketing automation platforms and email and EDM platforms. It allows you to start getting familiar with how they work, getting uh, familiar with composing emails, getting familiar with creating templates, and getting familiar with essentially very, very beginner level or basic level segmentation. Now what is segmentation? Segmentation becomes really, really critical when you, especially as you grow your mailing list database. And when you get up to decent numbers, then you need to start segmenting so that you're not just batching and blasting and sending the same message out to every single customer that receives your email. Because if you do that, then what happens is a lot of those emails will be highly irrelevant. So me as a male, for example, if I got an email that was targeted at females and all of the products that were being marketed in it were targeted at females, that would be very irrelevant for me. It would increase the likelihood that I would unsubscribe from that mailing list if I continue to receive irrelevant emails to me. So what is segmentation? Well, in a nutshell, segmentation takes a couple of key factors together, joins them together, and allows you to slice and dice your email list into subsets of that mailing list. So we take a couple of factors. We take a combination of customer demographic data or customer attribute data, and we combine that with behavioral data and uh, in terms of purchasing behavior data, as well as product attributes. And I'll give you a couple of very quick examples. So obviously, if you uh, taking purely your demographic demographic data, you might say, okay, we're going to target, we're going to create a segment for our over 65 uh, year old newsletter members. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to send them products that are relevant to seniors. 
And as a result of that, it's going to be much more targeted and you're not going to be bla blasting out senior targeted products to people that are under 65. Similarly, if somebody has been buying something that is red, for example, let's say you're a fashion brand, and 85% of the time somebody has been buying something for, for, that is red from you, a red product, and then you get a new red product in, then obviously you may want to segment by that, that purchase behavior and say, okay, everybody that has purchased a red product from us before, um, we want to put them into a subset of this list, a segment, and then we want to market to them uh, our new range of red products. And you can start combining those and slicing and dicing those in a whole bunch of different ways. Now that's just scratching the very surface of segmentation in a very simple way. Segmentation can get very complex and it's an art and a science in its own right. And the more targeted or the, the ideal segment is actually a segment of one. So if you can take a 10,000 person database and you can target each individual email, target and ta tailor each individual email in an automated way to make sure no two people see the same content or are marketed to in exactly the same way, then you're going to get a much higher conversion rate of those customers because that content is targeted and relevant to them. So what you need to have is you need to have an EDM platform that allows you to segment, that supports that kind of model, that supports tracking of order history and all of, this, all of the, both the, the customer attribute data or demographic data, as well as the purchase history data and all of the product attributes that go along with those individual orders. So you have to be able to marry those together in the platform and then perform some slicing and dicing um, maneuvers from there. So as I said, MailChimp is definitely the first place that most businesses will start because it meets all of their needs and it's at a very low cost. And even once you go up out of the free tier, they have many, many different tiers that are very affordable for most businesses, regardless of size. Now MailChimp does have its limitations. It doesn't, it doesn't do a lot of the advanced segmentation uh, that other platforms do. And it also doesn't do inline segmentation where you can have conditional content within an email. So for example, you could define in, in more advanced platforms, you can define within a given email, you can have the same template, the same email, but you can have a conditional block of content in that email that says, okay, if, if this uh, segment is viewing this email or if this, this recipient uh, is in this segment, then we want to show them this image and this product and this specific block in the email. If they fall into this other segment, then they see this alternate image and this alternate product. And so that allows you to have one simple email but have conditional content that displays based on different rules and different segments within that email depending on who's receiving it. So once we start getting outside of the realms of MailChimp and we start needing to do much more complex things with our email platform, our EDM or marketing automation platform, then you're starting to get into platforms such as Bronto, such as Marketo, and such as DotMailer. There's a lot of other high-end sort of enterprise class EDM platforms out there and some of them are even above the, the, the level of the, the three platforms that I just mentioned. Now also it's worth remembering that some EDM platforms target B2C businesses and some platforms target B2B businesses in the way that they operate and the workflows that they need to support. Bronto and Dotmailer tend to support um, retail businesses and so B2C businesses, so business uh, to consumer businesses and the likes of Marketo and Pardot and some of the other marketing automation platforms tend to focus on B2B or business to business businesses that are wholesale distribution type businesses. So make sure that when you're starting to pick your platform that you start to really nut out exactly what kind of functionality that you need. But if it's your first go at really running mailing lists and, and doing email marketing at any great scale, then I suggest you start with MailChimp because it's probably going to do everything you need and it's going to do it either free or very, very cheaply for you and it's going to allow you to get your feet wet in a very, very low risk way. Now the other thing to consider is all of the other platforms and technologies that you may need to plug your EDM platform into. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about plugging into your CRM usually, as well as, if you have one, uh, as well as your front-end website. So that way, when newsletter signups, for example, happen through your website, you want it to seamlessly update your mail list through a, na through a native integration so that it automatically adds any new subscribers through your website automatically onto your mailing list without you having to manually export out of your e-commerce platform and into your mailing list platform every single time you want to do uh, a mailing. So when you start thinking about that from a digital transformation perspective, you want to future-proof your technology stack and you want to tr try to pick an EDM platform that will integrate with as many pieces of technology that you currently have as well as technologies that you think you may have in the medium to long-term future. So email is still absolutely critical. As in, uh, I just want to do a final sort of a bit of a wrap-up about this particular episode and that is that email is absolutely still mission critical to the revenue contribution of almost all businesses. It's still in the top three or four channels of, of all online and omni-channel businesses and it still uh, constitutes you know anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of revenue of most e-commerce and omni-channel businesses. So with, and it also is at a very very low cost. 
So once you have the technology in place and apart from paying to send your emails out, the cost really is just down to the production or the creation of the emails that you're going to send as well as the internal resources and time it will take for you to create the, the appropriate segments, craft your content in your emails for those particular segments and to send them out. So there definitely is an internal cost in terms of an HR cost, a people cost, but from a technology cost perspective, the, the return on investment ratio for email is extremely, extremely high. And you also, because you tend to be, in almost all cases, remarketing to existing customers, the conversion rate on email is much, much higher than newly acquired customers or newly acquired prospects through your website that have come maybe through search and they're not an existing customer of yours. So email is still absolutely mission critical to your business, absolutely mission critical to your digital transformation journey. And it allows you to communicate on an ongoing basis in a really st structured and methodical way to your existing customer base. It allows you to go out and solicit people to sign up to your newsletter list to build your database of loyal and faithful followers. And, and these people, remember, if they opt in to hear from you, then they want to hear from you. And it's much, much more likely that they're going to convert into an ongoing, long-term customer that then takes action and uh, will be a valuable, they'll have a much higher lifetime value because you're able to remarket to them over time as you get new products, as you get new services, as you do things that you know these customers will want, it's much more likely that they'll actually engage with you because they have a trust relationship with you and they've bought with you before. So hopefully this information has been helpful and I'd love to hear any information you have or any advice or tips that you have uh, as you've gone down your EDM or marketing automation platform journey and as you've implemented those things. Um, there's, always, there's always little gotchas and so every platform has its little gotchas. It's got its pros and its cons. Some work better and integrate better with other platforms than others. So when you look at it within the context of your wider digital stack, always keep that in mind as you're vetting new EDM technologies or new marketing automation technologies. Hope that's been helpful. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.